My name is Sebastian Crutch. I'm a clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist working at the Dementia Research Centre at the UCL Institute of Neurology. Dementia is a syndrome, if you like. It's a group of um, progressive cognitive disorders, so problems of, um, of higher brain skills such as memory, and thinking, and language and perception, seeing things clearly, which comes together. And it can be caused by a whole variety of different diseases, but dementia, so dementia can be very varied in how it presents itself. So Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia and probably affects about two-thirds of people who have a dementia syndrome. Um, but there are other uh, quite common diseases such as vascular dementia, which is where the dementia is caused by ch changes in the vascular system, the blood supply to the brain. Um, it can be thought of in some instances as being like a series of mini strokes which can gradually affect people and gradually take a toll on perhaps their memory or their, their ability to, to process information quickly. Um, another condition which affects some people, particularly older people, is a condition called dementia with Lewy bodies where it's a slightly different pathological change, so slightly different changes going on amongst the brain cells but the impact is somewhere between Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease in the sense that people have difficulty with their memory and um, with their perception, but also they have some features of um, Parkinsonism in the sense of slowed walking and some stiffness, and often they have um, falls and hallucinations are very, very common. Um, there are other conditions which, again, affect different um, groups of the population. So there's a condition called frontotemporal dementia, which actually encompasses several different diseases that tends to affect either behaviour or language quite early on and often affects younger people, so it's often more commonly found in people under the age of 65 than, than a condition such as Alzheimer's disease. For many people, the, the first signs of uh, dementia can be quite difficult to identify because it comes on very subtly and often people are in it for a year or two might have some odd behaviours or difficulties that they're experiencing that they can't quite put their finger on, they don't quite understand why it's happening to them. So often people who have early stage dementia will present to their GP or perhaps a family member will actually go to the GP saying, I'm concerned about my, my father or my husband. And the changes can be quite varied. In typical Alzheimer's disease, it's often instances of, of forgetting a particular event of misplacing items, of being slightly confused or needing to ask questions repetitively in order to get the information because it hasn't been retained properly. Um, but depending on the type of dementia and the, the disease underpinning um, the condition, then the symptoms can vary. Sometimes it might be that you're having difficulties finding words for things. Sometimes it might be that you're having subtle difficulties perceiving things. So my particular research is interested in why Alzheimer's disease can express itself in so many different ways. I think if you ask most people, if you say Alzheimer's disease to them, they immediately think of perhaps a much older person who's confused and got memory problems. But actually Alzheimer's disease can also affect people's language, it can affect people's perception. And defend, depending on which parts of the brain are affected first by the Alzheimer's disease, that can dictate which area of their skills take the brunt of the damage early on. So I'm particularly interested in working with a people, group of people who have a condition called posterior cortical atrophy, which literally means back of the brain shrinkage. The characteristic symptoms of which are early changes in visual perception and spatial perception, so seeing what things are and seeing where they are. And by working with and understanding the differences between the typical Alzheimer's disease and these rarer variants such as the visual variant of Alzheimer's disease, we can try to underpin some of the factors which drive the pathology, the disease, to affect particular brain regions. And if we can understand those factors, then those might be uh, things that we can target either with medications or with therapies to try to prevent them in the future.